We commence our tour on the Haven Gore Bridge. To the east lies the mouth of the creek and the Mapland Sands. Looking due north across Haven Gore, we can see Haven Gore Farm. Leaving Haven Gore, we are now on the dual carriageway on New England Island, which was once owned by St Bart's Hospital. Approaching on our left is Priestwood Farm, the house dating back to around 1700. On our right is Rugwood Farm, which was built in the 18th century. Entering the village of Church End, we see the boarded cottages which were built in the mid-twenties. The former blacksmith's house on our left. Opposite are the white terrace row, which was some 150 years old, recently renovated. The bungalow on our left is all that remains of the old mill shopping complex The business and post office transferred across the road. To the left of the stock brick built houses is the old RE yard office, the maintenance area before World War II. The adjacent single dwelling was the home of the district nurse. Next door was number 16, the home of the Dobsons. Now St Mary's Church, built, 19, built 1851. Mr. F Mr Fred Webb of Ten Church Inn was there and he always um, watched out for Mr Charlie Cater who lived in the farm about a half a mile, three quarters of a mile down the road and the service couldn't start till he got there. So he, he sometimes a minute too late and, he, and Mr Webb would be known as Fred to us, would be standing outside uh, so, and so as he could see when he was coming up the path and that's how the, the grooves got in the, in the masonry there. Now this tombstone was the site of juvenile crime in the mid-twenties when the youngsters of the day used to get onto top of this, on top of this stone and pick the Victoria plums from the tree which came over the brick wall. In the event of any passers by, they used to dive off and shelter between the, the adjoining tombstones. The George and the Dragon was originally three houses, which was built in 1650. Opposite the George and Dragon is the old Hall Farm House, built in the 19th century. The single cottage now left was once the home of the workers, known as the men's kitchen. The school building, built in 1848, was closed in 1988 due to lack of numbers. The house is still occupied, but the old playground still shows the marks of Hofstadt's memories of yesteryear. Travelling north by Naswick Farm, we come to Ridgemouse Farm en route to Corsand Village. It is said to be the first brick-built building on the island. Nearby is a former cart lodge, built bricked up in World War II. Inside showed a fine collection of Queen Post roof trusses, a design rarely used in this century. These were built in the early 30s. Yeah, they bricked and filled that in along here and made this into a cookhouse, you see, because there was another eight, um, anti aircraft battery in here. Uh, they had this in the middle of the war and this was turned into a cookhouse. Huh? They turned into a cookhouse during the war, this was. That's his service in there, isn't it? Oh, yeah. That was, that was a use. Passing through the scattered dwellings of Kent's Road, this is the old signal cottage built in the 18th century during the Napoleonic Wars and was recently renovated. Nearby is what was once the King's Head public house, now a residence and this was built in the 16th century. We are now at Hill House, formerly the home of the local harness maker, Mr. Mead. This is Fisherman's Head, viewing the Mapland Sands and what remains of the Broomway, which prior to the road to the mainland was the only road to the mainland, negotiable only during low tide. Tree Farm is our next stop, possibly the oldest farm on the island. Now returning to Church End, we arrive at Lodge Farm, now renovated and modernised. 
We complete our tour with a glance into history, for across the field shows a clump of trees which was the site of the old workhouse yard. Then completing our tour at the village hall adjacent to the whole farm.